so good afternoon good afternoon everybody and thank you so much for joining this session and i could see that there are more than 200 participants uh, till now uh, so what is the agenda here what we are going to learn right so as you know that we have planned to start a series on network security from scratch if you can see this so it is going to be absolutely from scratch i'm assuming that uh, you all, uh, although you have a background of security and everything, but uh, definitely there are people who are new to in, uh, new in the in the industry. So if you have experience with network security, this is whatever topic we are going to cover are going to be a refreshment for you, right? And for the new people, basically this is going to be good uh, if they are starting doing something in uh, network security. So overall, what is the agenda here? The agenda here is that we are going behind why network security, and this is really important. So this is my learning style that if you understand the history behind something, if you understand why behind something, then that technology or that something is going to be easy to learn. So we are going to see the historical importance of network security, right? Then we are going to talk about what are the expectation of these sessions, whatever the session we are going to have, maybe next 12, 13 or 16 sessions, what we are going to cover in that, right? The third point is how we are going to learn it. It is going to be very interesting to see that how we can break a complex problem into multiple parts. And if we can learn those parts, then, then the picture is going to be complete, the full flesh. We are going to see how we are going to learn network security. Then we are going to talk about basic building blocks of network security, which is confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. Believe me, I am not a good fan of terminology, right? So we will introduce terms once, one we, once we understand it, but it is just for the agenda that we are going to cover some part of confidentiality integrity, which are the basic building blocks of network security. It is as simple as that. So how this meeting is going to be proceed. So as you can see, there are huge number of people here, more than 350 now. So what I'm going to do every 15 or 20 minutes, I'll go on mute. I'll see your questions in the chat, right? Or I will unmute you all so that you can ask your questions, right? Uh, but after one hour, I will be here for a good amount of time, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and you can ask your questions there, right? So overall, we are going to learn network security from scratch. And here is the importance. Why do we need security and what is the historical importance of it, right? So here you go. So by the way, guys, whenever you see this red color text, just ignore it. I have written it for myself so that I don't forget some of the things which I wanted to tell you. So just leave it for now. But apart from it, everything uh, is something which you should take care, right? You should uh, spend your time on. So if I talk about network security history, and if I go into the era of World War II, uh, which starts around 1939 then we have there we have two groups one is allied forces and the other one is excess power in allied forces we have united we had united states of america england which is great great britain also russia and if you talk about excess power we had germany italy and japan right so there was a war going on between them and it is really, really important to understand that the soldier who literally go on, go on the field, they fight, right? And generally they get the instructions from their commander. So if you talk about Germany, they would have had their commanders which were giving information to their soldiers, right? That from where we need to attack today, it is on day to day basis. And it was happening over these messages. It means that 
these messages are really of great importance if these message were captured by enemies or basically if, if anybody from the different side the other side can able to get this message then there is a problem the problem is the other side also know about our uh, whatever the strategy we are planning to attack right it means these messages should be of great this message are of great importance and should not be breached nobody should get them and if they get them nobody can take meaningful information out of it so if i talk about germany germany was so good in this message sending right and they were so confident that if their messages were captured by i'm not sure why people are asking for uh, annotation just uh, uh, i will be coming uh, means i will be stopping it for some time for your questions but for now let me let me complete whatever i want to say in next one hour okay so if you see here we have two forces one is allied one is excess power and germany was so confident with respect to its messaging system that these messages should not, cannot be breached by anybody and if they were able to breach it they cannot get something out of it for example these messages were not in german language were not in uh, any language right these messages were scrambled if i say scramble if you even get these messages if you read them these messages are not going to uh, not going to make something make sense right so most of the times because there were frequencies of these messages allied forces were able to get all these messages but but the problem was they couldn't read it it means that germany had some algorithm some way through which they were just sending their message in a language which is not readable to anybody else apart from this commander and the destination where this message was going right but at the back end us england and russia were trying to break these messages and there was a guy called alan turing right he created first machine to break this code to break this message so that this message can be read by us also right so basically the germany the algorithm which it was using to scramble those messages was known as enigma right and this was the guy mr alan turing who broke this enigma right and believe me because of this uh, the allied forces came to know about the all the plans whatever these guys were planning where exactly that attack is going to happen and it shortens the world war life by two years every year people were losing uh, their life right and if somebody is just short is the life of this world war by two years it means that it is a war hero right so overall if i talk about then basically these message for germany was of utmost importance which were breached by which were taken by allied forces they knew their plan and it helped them to win this war okay why i am telling all these thing to you because the situation is same here right you talk all the way all the time on internet although it is the conversation is not that crucial if two friends are talking but believe me all the communication which is going over the internet if you talk about finances it is right there so much of financial transactions are going on and if somebody can breach it you can understand the power of this breach right so overall if you are sending a message to another party if you want to save it so that it cannot go into the other hands or the intruder hand then basically you need to do something and that is what we are going to study in this complete uh, course of maybe 10 to 12 hours or maybe 16 hours i am not sure about it right so the importance is, importance was there in in such a great uh, what i can say uh, the world war event was there right it went for 4 to 5 years 
and we we still understand that what is the uh, outcome of that and if the outcome changed then what would have happened to us right so security or the message security is really really important our history says this right and now we talk about why network security right and how basically we are going to talk about that what are the different things you are going to need to achieve that security right we have our two characters and these two characters are going to be there for this entire course the first character name is anjali the second character name is mr rahul i'm not sure whether you have watched my tcp series or not but these two characters were there both have proposed each other and now they are in relationship right and now they are talking over internet and if they are talking over internet it is important for rahul and anjali that their messages are for always for themselves right and nobody can else see those messages but believe me if you are talking on a public internet there are so many people who are just sitting there to see your conversation to watch your messages and just destroy your conversation means if you have a big company if you have a company right which is using the internet services there are many people who just want to destroy your vision or basically who want to get the information out of you so that they can they can uh, they can get some monetary benefit so overall if i say there is a need miss miss anjali wants to talk to rahul and they want to talk over uh, uh, over an insecure medium securely how to do that what are the various things which we need to consider right so what i want is that you should also think that the problem is simple right the problem is simple anjali wants to send a message to rahul over this insecure medium where there are so many people who can watch these messages right the problem is simple so what i want is just try to think from the perspective of when the security things were being developed right what was the mindset of the people if you think from that mindset you can you also can uh, suggest some of the solutions and believe me whatever we are going to read whatever we are going to read in terms of whatever means in terms of pki or how security is going to be achieved everything is taken from the real life examples so if we are read if we are going to read about public infrastructure we are going to see that from where actually it took, it would have taken everything is from real life example because we are talking about network security it means that we are talking about trust right and how to achieve that trust believe me we are going to read about it but first first thing first now the problem is anjali wants to send this message m over this internet to rahul securely okay so anjali and rahul came to a conclusion that if they want to send this message of course they cannot send it in english language they cannot send it in hindi language because this guy can capture these messages and would can 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 read it it is as simple as that so anjali is saying that whatever i am going to send you i am just scrambling it what is the meaning of scramble i am not sending that thing in plain english we will read about how to scramble the message also but and and she told she she told everything in advance to mr raul what are the rules for this scrambling for example maybe she is planning to write a with z j b with k and so on right so the rules are only known to miss anjali and miss rahul so that whenever this message is going on now this message is not in plain english or plain hindi this message is cryptic now and if this message is cryptic or scrambled mr intruder can get the message but cannot get any information out of it and if it can if, if he or she cannot get any information out of it this message is just waste for him right but mr raul when this message goes here mr raul can have this message right and he knows the rule also how to read it 
it means that anjali and rahul has come to a point where they are saying that i am sending some message which is a scramble with some rules if you want to uh, if you want to use it these are the rules if you want to read it please follow these rules because those rules were not known by this mr intruder that is why he is not going to read it that is why he cannot read it right the process what i am whatever i am doing is actually known as your confidentiality why confidentiality because now the data is confidential between whom only anjali and rahul because you have made this data or this message unreadable to others right and you know the rules and the ending party or the destination knows the rule so if i say this is a message we we know that we all are network engineers instead of message we would love to hear it at packet because packet is the data unit at layer 3 so if you are comfortable with this packet just presume that packet contains some information or data right and this data is not scrambled by anjali mr rahul knows the rule and that is why he or she he he or anjali can read these messages and nobody else but if i do only confidentially is it the proof that everything is fine absolutely not we need to think something else also and what is that something else that is point number 2 although this guy mr intruder can get these messages and cannot get this any cannot get any information out of this message but of course this guy can change this message right suppose anjali is saying hi how are you and this guy is totally changing it with some any other random number now this message is reached um, this message has reached to mr raul mr raul knows the rule and when he decrypt the message or when he open this message with those rules the information is not making any sense to him all the mr intruder does not know that what he had changed in the message but he can just destroy this communication by changing this message right and mr rahul is not sure what anjali is saying because his message is changed by mr intruder and it's a problem so it means that confidentiality cannot solve the problem of a secure communication because any guy any guy in the middle can change those messages so it means that we need something more than confidentiality we need that if anybody in uh, anybody on internet change my message by any chance then this guy or the destination should know about it that this is not the message from anjali somebody has picked it up and changed its content and if it is the case then mr rahul is not going to believe this message right but mr rahul should not should come to know about it that the message is forged the message is changed by an intruder and how we are going to make sure we are going to make sure this with integrity what is the meaning of integrity if you are saying that your solution of security is in, has integrity the meaning is if you are sending a message although an intruder can take it can change it but the destination will come to know about it that the packet or the message was not the original message and it was changed by an intruder so two things are completed you know now confidentiality confidentiality is the process of sending data so that only sender and receiver can read about it because it is encrypted or scrambled with its certain rules integrity means if you are sending something this guy intruder can take that message can change it but at the destination or the destination immediately comes to know that this message is not original message sent by anjali okay third thing which is again important is which is i would say one of the most important thing is first whenever you start the communication whenever anjali start the communication she should sure about it that she is going to talk only to rahul or she is talking to rahul right because suppose she is sending a message i am showing in green color this message or this packet with some data 
towards Rahul. And this guy is saying, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Introduce is saying, Anjali, I am Rahul. Right? Maybe he got the message in between and he is replying on behalf of Rahul that I am Rahul. This is the problem. It means that in leave about confidentiality, leave about integrity. First thing first, you need to always do is you check whether you are talking to a right entity or right party, party or not. Right? The art or the processes with which you are going to be sure that you are talking to a right party is known as authentication. It means that if you are talking to Mr. Rahul from here to here, Mr. Rahul is going to authenticate himself to you. With me, there are many things to authenticate. For example, Mr. Rahul possesses a password, which is known to only Mr. Rahul and nobody knows about this password, right? He can authenticate himself uh, to Anjali with this password. And of course, if Mr. Intruder is saying, I am Rahul, he is not going to have that password. So it means that there are three things which are very, very important. Confidentiality, you are sending message in encrypted form or scrambled form. Integrity, if somebody changes the data, the destination is going to immediately know that this data is changed. This data is not original at all. And the last thing is your authentication. You are going to make sure that the party you are going to talk or you are talking to is actually the party which is supposed to be. It is as simple as that. What I am what I'm talking about is a security solution. If any security solution gives you these three things, confidentiality, authentication, and integrity, we call it a foolproof solution, right? If I talk about only individual thing, can confidentiality provide you secure communication? No, absolutely not. But can confidentiality and authentication provide you a foolproof solution? Yes, to an extent, but an intruder can always change the message. And that is why we need integrity. So if you combine all of them, then you might get a solution. Although there are some other things also like non-repudiation, but we are not talking about them. Now, majorly, if I talk about, if you understand the concepts of confidentiality, whatever the concept we have there, if you understand integrity, if you understand authentication, Guys, believe me, network security is going to be piece of cake for you, right? Now, let's talk about <clears throat> what are the, what we are going to learn. Although we have just seen the agenda of today's session, but now I am talking about what we are going to cover in next 12 to 16 sessions, right? First thing first. We are just securing this network. This network can be of enterprise, right? On which you are working. I, I know that most of us are the network engineer, network consulting engineer. We, con, uh, we consult, we improve, or we improve the, the, the network of the customer, right? We implement uh, the network, right? But how to secure it? If you want to secure it, just like we design our layer three, layer two infrastructure in the customer network, we need to understand network security. And that's why we are going to, that's what we are going to learn here in the upcoming sessions. We are going right, the, uh, right into the basics of security, which where we talk about confidentiality, integrity, authentication, non-reputation, everything, right? Then to major protocol, SSL and IPsec, you all know that we are, we all are using them. Whenever there is a communication going on, with any server on internet and if you see a lock there on your browser it means that that session is safe it is safe because they are using a security solution which you call uh, ssl right uh, today's world it is tls transport layer security but it has came from ssl we are going to talk about ipsec because if you want to connect two different networks securely over internet we are going to use IPsec, although there are some other use cases also. But we are going to go a little bit deeper into this, SSL as well as IPsec. Then 
I want to explain you some of the most popular attacks which are right now going on, which happened in the past. And if I talk about attacks, it is, a, it, it is going to attack on your network, your information, right? Believe me, when, I, when I'm going to talk about these attacks, there might be so many things are come to your mind that we can prevent this attack this way. And believe me, there is a solution which is implemented in the security solution, whatever you are going to suggest. But the point is you start thinking about that how you are going to prevent the attack. And you can think how you are going to prevent an attack if you understand the attack well. So, so probably every two session I am going to talk about an, uh, uh, an attack which recently happened on network infrastructure. Then we are going to talk about individual products like security in cloud. And we have a solution for it which is umbrella we are going to talk about firewall previously we had adaptive security appliance is now we have ftd right we are going to talk about that we are going to learn identity service engine right because it is very very important that if somebody is here and he wants to get into your network to access some of the servers here right why your network is important your network is important because your company or this network has data. Data is stored on the servers. So if somebody is coming to this network, it's your responsibility to authenticate this guy that whether you are part of my network or not, whether you are part of my organization or not. We are going to talk about it through ICE. I am not saying ICE is only authentication server. There are so many things associated with ICE. We are going to talk about it. Then once we are done with all six of these modules, we are going to talk about how we can secure an enterprise network. It is a problem right now because I am in a plant design and implementation team here. It is, it is going to be great if we include the security also whenever we start designing a network from the day from day one itself. Right, it is going to be very, very important. So if you know, if you know networking, uh, well, that is perfectly fine. But I believe me, whatever we are going to cover in these 16 sessions are going to be important for everybody. Doesn't matter you are from security background or not. At least this much of security knowledge is needed in today's world. And learning that is not that difficult at all. I am just asking for your 16 hours and that is it. Right? I have with me Mr. Ashish also from the security team. He is going to deliver some cool things on umbrella firewall eyes pretty soon. Right? But let's to start with, to begin with, let's make our fundamentals ready so that we can understand the working of these firewalls, identity service engine everything right and then we are going to talk about how to design a net how to how to design the security of a particular enterprise using whatever the learning we have okay but now there might be some wrong expectations also so i would like to set your expectations from these sessions right so what is the expectation suppose you want to go a little bit deeper into network security you like it that's why you are going deeper right so and suppose that that path of that network security and going there and becoming expert is of approximately 100 kilometers say right through these sessions i am just enabling you to walk or run starting 15 to 20 kilometers and that is it but that is going to be rock solid. The fundamentals are going to be pretty strong. And believe me, if you are starting a journey, if you begin with a solid start, there are more chances to complete it as compared to if you have a shaky start. Okay. So it is, it is, it is our responsibility, my and Ashish, to walk you through those 15 to 20 kilometers. But yes, if you want to be an expert, if you want to go a little bit deeper into that network security fundamentals concepts, right? 
you are feel free, feel free to go but we are here to just start just to enable you right and that is why if i am teaching you if we, if we are talking about ftd or firewall it doesn't mean that i am going to teach you everything in firewall but yes we are going to enable you that what actually firewall is where it gets fitted into enterprise sec uh, network security what it does right and if you have interest then go and uh, uh, go and learn about it more maybe we are going to have some individual courses on ftd ice maybe pretty soon just like whatever we are doing network security from scratch we can do ftd from scratch or identity service uh, uh, engine from scratch no problems but this session these 16 sessions are going to enable you to rock uh, to start those 15 to 20 kilometers of your journey of 100 kilometers and those are going to be rock solid okay so this is this should be the expectation now let's talk about how we are going to learn network security in an easy manner okay we just talk about confidentiality integrity and authentication on a pretty high level right so what is the problem? The problem was Anjali wanted to talk to Rahul over an unsecure medium, which was internet. And she wants to talk to Rahul securely so that if other person are there, it doesn't matter. So the problem was secure communication or network security. If we break that with, an, with a hammer, it is going to be divided into four parts. Why I'm doing this? Believe me, if you have a big puzzle and if you divide that puzzle into shorter pieces or smaller pieces and if you work on these individual pieces and then combine the combine back the puzzle, this approach is going to be pretty easy instead of solving that puzzle at once. That is what exactly I am doing here. I am breaking this network security problem into multiple parts by breaking it, uh, sorry, by, by hammering it and now you can see that this problem is broke. The big problem is bro broken into several pieces. One, two, three, four. What is number one? Confidentiality. Number two, integrity. Number three, authentication. And number four is going to be your non-repudiation. Right? What is the meaning of it? The meaning is just make a mental model that we are learning network security but if we are into confidentiality we are just reading or just understanding a part of network security the knowledge is not complete if you learn confidentiality it doesn't mean that you have learned network security no absolutely not right but if we are talking about confidentiality you should have in this mind that okay i am into a smaller piece of a puzzle I'm just learning that. I'm trying to solve that by learning it, right? Similarly, we are going to talk about integrity separately. We are going to talk about authentication separately. We are going to talk about non-repudiation separately. And once we know all these things, we are going to combine them. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And believe me, your security picture is going to be complete. Right? Having said that, let's start from the network security piece network security confidentiality piece right so i would like to take a pause here uh, so that i can so if you have any question yeah so i can see that uh, uh, most of the guys is uh, saying that cia is uh, basically a means availability that's perfectly fine. A means availability, right? But here I am not saying that we are talking about three pillars of security. I am just talking about that if a solution is saying, if a solution is saying uh, that it is providing confidentiality, integrity, and authentication, then I am saying that so that solution is foolproof. Of course, the solution should be available. And what is the meaning of available? The meaning of available is just simple that whatever your data is, there are two ways to secure it, right? Just, just hide this data in a particular place and lock that room, that is it. But that is not going to be available to for everybody. So data availability is really, really important. 
So if you create a network which is not available, then there is a no point of that network at all. It is as good as breaching, breaching of that network, right? So I can understand your question that C I A A means availability, perfectly fine. But I'm talking about confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. If a solution is providing this, of course, the solution needs to be available. Okay. So So now the question is whether these sessions are recorded or not. The sessions are going to be recorded, but I am not recording all this, these sessions on uh, WebEx because the quality which I get in WebEx is not that much. So I am recording the session on my software and these sessions are going to be available to you in around 8 or 9 p.m. today in on my website, uh, sorry, on my SharePoint uh, in Cisco. I'll give you the link. Right. So I think anybody else. OK, so let's uh, let's resume the session and uh, what we are going to do, I will be uh, I will be opening for I will be unmuting you all just after three o'clock so that you can direct ask me question instead of writing. OK. So having said that, let's talk about the first thing, which is confidentiality. And once again, thank you so much, guys, for showing your interest. I could see that there are more than 400 people, to be precise, 426. So it means that there is a great interest of people in learning security. And believe me, if you go through these 16 sessions, I am making you sure, I am making it sure that you are going to learn a lot from it. At least this security knowledge should be with everybody, right? No matter what, you are a data center engineer, you are a net network engineer, no, nothing. At least this much knowledge should, you, should, you should have. Now, let's talk about confidentiality here. I have taken an example uh, and what I, what I wanted to uh, uh, talk about here is that the confidentiality thing is not new. It is not new at all. Let's talk about what happens in, uh, in the 1000 years back or 600 years back, right? We have king number one here. We have king number two. Where is king number two? Okay, I forgot to write, wrote it. This is king two, right? And they are part of two separate kingdoms here and here, many miles away but they need to send messages and at that point of time we didn't have internet and if we, if we had internet at, at that point of time then also we need to think about how we can save send the message securely so these guys are pretty clever and they know the concept of com confidentiality at that point of time also right what they did right if i talk about china if i talk about china what they used to do is they write their message on a cloth. Actually, it was a silk cloth, right? And then basically they fold it and make it small uh, round balls, right? Or the, of that cloth. And this messenger, which is a pretty skillful uh, person, he just swallowed all uh, swallowed all these uh, messages, right? And then, of course, he's going to travel the miles, many miles, and then deliver that to king number two. But of course, there is a problem in this method. The problem was, what if this guy is not trustworthy? What is messenger can give all these balls, whatever it has, right? The silk balls to any person who, who is interested in the communication between king one and king two, right? So there are there were some other techniques also. If I if I give you an example, and I, I think that in in our childhood time we have we we all have done that. So if you talk about onion juice, right? And if you write something on a paper with this onion juice, it is not going to be visible to anybody, even not to you also, right? So what this king can do means they, they would have done that at that point of time that they have given uh, this guy a piece of paper 
where they have written some information, right? And at the back of the uh, paper, or basically between these lines, they have written some encoded message with its onion juice. And believe me, if this guy does not know that something is written with onion juice here on this paper, right? He cannot read it. The messenger job is to take this message, just go on to this king and then deliver the message. And now king one and king two knows that how to decrypt this message, right? He is just going to heat it. And after heating, he will be seeing all these all these messages, whatever the king one wanted to say, right? But the process, but the algorithm is known by only king one and king two, right? What was the algorithm or what was the key? The key was basically king two knew that if he wants to read the encrypted message from king one, he needs to uh, uh, heat this piece of paper. Otherwise, he, he won't be able to read it, right? But this messenger was not inform was not having any information about uh, such things okay so with this board the whole sole point is confidentiality is not new guys it was there from so many years right people were using different type of method i'm just talking about only two there were many methods right now let's talk about something more in confidentiality and now from the perspective of today's work now we although we the distance is going to be same maybe i can send a message from here to united states of america many miles away but the medium previously the medium was something else now the medium is internet a public network right how we are going to achieve the confidentiality in that public network so i have this uh, i have this picture for you where I have one file here which says, which you can all read, what is the meaning of it? Because it's in plain English, you can read it, you all know English, how there, how are you enjoying learning security? Absolutely, yes. Right? Now, let's talk about what is going to happen if somebody has changed this message into this message. And this guy is intelligent enough to know that if he can change from this message to this message, he can always read back. He knows the trick because, because he knows how he has come across this message at the first place because he is doing some scrambling of these uh, alphabets. With what tool? Only he knows. But if I see this message, if an intruder see this message, he cannot make anything out of it because he does not know the rules how this message is transformed from a simple English to this encrypted language. Right? The message which you can read, which is written in the plane, we call it as plain text. Now I'm talking about some terminology and the reason is, the reason is, when you are going to talk about network security to somebody else, they understand only these terminology. So the piece of a paper where you have written everything in plain is your plain text. It is as simple as that, right? But you have converted this plain piece of a paper to a language which is not understandable to anybody. And that is why this piece of paper with the new information is known as ciphertext. What is the meaning of ciphertext? It is encrypted. Cipher means encrypted. Right? It is not making any sense. It is written in a secure manner. Only whoever encrypted can know what is actually written here. Right? The complete thing, whatever I'm doing, the process of converting a plain text into ciphertext is known as encryption. As simple as that. And if you can do the encryption, you can achieve the confidentiality. And the reason is because only two parties, right? Who knows what is the algorithm of whatever was used by this guy. If both, if two parties know about it, they can decrypt the message easily. 
Although there is a key factor also, which I'm going to explain you in next board. But for this board, just try to understand. If you can convert a plain text into ciphertext, ciphertext into plain text, then basically you have that algorithm with you. It means that you are capable of doing encryption. It means that you are capable of doing confidentiality. Right? Again, the character was Anjali and Rahul. Anjali is not going to send message like this. She is going to send the message like this. If I give, give them a number, suppose this is number one, this is number two. Anjali is going to send number two to Rahul, right? And Anjali also have informed Rahul that these are the rules through which I have encrypted this message. And that's why Rahul is going to see that and no intruder can see that. That's why basically your messages are going to be on ciphertext and the process which you are using is encryption. But now let's understand the meaning of, what is the meaning of algorithm and what is the meaning of a key, right? Let's see that. So if you if we go to the next board here, just pay close attention, guys. We are going a little bit technical. Right now, we were just talking about history. We were talking about some stories. And we talk about confidentiality, integrity, authentication. Let's talk about some something in terms of uh, mathematics also. Although I am not in including much, and I won't be including. But just pay close attention for next five, uh, five to 10 minutes. Here again, we have now internet, we have Anjali here, we have Mr. Rahul here. The goal is simple. Anjali wants to send a message, maybe she wants to send A, B, C, D to Rahul, right? And there is a middleman also. Of course, she cannot send it over a public medium, the plain text. This is the plain text, right? So what she has decided, what she has decided, she is going to encrypt this message with an algorithm. And the algorithm is that she is going to randomize these bits, these alphabets. Right? So she is deciding that if she has to send A, she won't be writing A. Instead, she is going to write Z. Instead of B, she is going to write A. So she is moving left, one position left, right? So if I write here, exactly here, if she wants to send A, B, C, D to Rahul, she is going to send Z, A. Okay, let me write with the other pen so that the encrypted message is in yellow, guys. It is going to be Z, A, B, C. Simple, right? But you must be thinking that Vishnu, this is very, very simple. This guy can read, can read it. Absolutely can read it because he can easily figure out that what Anjali is uh, doing, right? But if I can increase the complexity, what is going to happen? Suppose this time Anjali is not saying minus one. What is the meaning of minus one? The meaning of minus one that Anjali is going left, one position left. If I say minus two, now Anjali is going two position left. It means instead of writing A, she is going to write Y. Instead of writing B, she is going to write Z and so on. It means that now if she choose minus one, this is going to be the message. If she choose minus two, the message is going to be Y, Z, A, B. It is as simple as that. Now again, you can argue with me, Mr. Vishnu. It's again pretty simple. What if I do minus 23 here? Right? You can argue with again, it is going to be simple because there are only 26 possibilities and I can do that and I can, but believe me, I'm not saying that this is the only encryption method or algorithm I have, but the algorithm is simple. I am just rearranging my alphabets, right? With what value I am rearranging with minus one, with minus two or minus 23, right? So the algorithm is just a rearrangement, right? What is the most important thing? The most important thing is this number. How this rearrangement is going to look like, right? If I do minus one, it is going to be minus one or left side one place. If I do two or minus two, it is going to be left hand side two places, right? So this number is actually your key 
and this algorithm is just a way to rearrange your message believe me guys on internet angeli can inform and suppose this algorithm name is algo suppose this algorithm name is algorithm 1 or algo 1 angeli can inform everybody to this intruder also to whole world that she is using algo 1 for its encryption this guy as well as this guy pretty good but she is not going to inform what key value she is using right so suppose she is using a key value of minus 23 and suppose this minus 23 is unbreakable i am saying suppose because i am going to prove you that through this key and algorithm there are many algorithms in current environment which are unbreakable i am not saying these are not going to be breakable in future these might be because whatever the previous algorithm we have in terms of encryption we are able to break them now and that is why there is no surety that whatever the encryption algorithm we have now cannot be broken in near future they can be right but for now everything every transaction on internet if it is going securely they are using some of the algorithm of encryption plus key Key is the important piece here. This guy also know what is the algorithm. Algorithm number is algorithm name is algo one. This guy also know the algorithm name is algo one. It is as simple as that. They both know. Everybody knows about it. But only Rahul and Anjali knows what is the key value. Anjali has informed Rahul that you need to use minus twenty three. If I am saying minus twenty three, it means that you need to go to Right side twenty three, right? If I is using minus one, you need to go to right side uh, one to read that. It is as simple as that. It means that if Anjali and Rahul has this key value and they know algorithm, only Anjali and Rahul can read it because this intruder does not know about this key value. And believe me, right now we are talking about twenty six combination. But what if I say that this key is pretty long? and you know from the computer science background that if we have a single digit which can change uh, which can take only two position for example if i have a single bit it can take only two position it means that we have only two combination from that right if we have two digit or two bits then the total number of communications are uh, com uh, uh, combinations are going to be 2 to the power 2 and suppose if my key length is 128 the number of combinations are going to be 2 to the power 128 believe me guys this is a huge number it means that if you want to break this algorithm if you want to break this communication and if i say my key value is 128 bit it means that i have these many combinations right what i can do is i can use algo combination for number one of the key to get some result it is not making sense then algo combination number of 2 and that's why 2 to the power 128 whole computing power if you put then still you are not going to get the result and this technology is by the way guys we known as brute force because you are literally forcing this algorithm with key right with so many combination to get the meaningful result out of, to break this conversation right so two things are important in confidentiality one is your algorithm of course it can be known by everybody because it is just the rearrangement of the things and the second thing is your key value but now the question arises again uh, anjali can go to rahul and can say that whatever I, the communication i am going to do it is from the key value is 23 but it is not happening right it is not the case with current computing systems right we talk to hundreds of computers on the world we never go and say that i am going to use this key right it means that there must be some algorithms must mechanism so that anjali can inform rahul that what key is it is using or she is using right and of course uh, and and of course that key is going to be exchanged over this internet which is again an unsafe medium but believe me we have so many mechanism through which only anjali and rahul can know about these keys nobody else right so two things are very very important 
if you know the algorithm, if you know the key, then basically you can achieve the confidentiality using encryption. What we call this algorithm as encryption algorithm and most prominent which we use in today's world are advanced encryption standard and DS. You all heard about it, right? With some certain key values, 256, 128, right? So if I talk about other thing, because I need to cover this board in today's session, that was my plan. So let's talk about one special kind, although whatever I have explained till now, it is, it is the form of symmetric encryption. And what is the meaning of symmetric encryption, right? Again, we have Anjali, again, we have Rahul, we have internet connectivity between them. Right from Anjali's laptop, I want to send this message. Hi there, how are you enjoying learning security? Absolutely, yes, we are. Right. So now Anjali have a key. Uh, Anjali has a key with uh, with her, right? And the key name is Kevin, and it is shown with this green color. This is your key, right? What actually is happening? If I explain you in plain terms, what we are doing here is we are just putting a lock on this file right and if i can put the lock then basically here is a here is this lock right now let me make some decent lock here and then basically anjali is using this key to lock this document right as simple as that now this document is locked nobody can nobody else can read it because they do not have the key and that is why it is going to reach to rahul and internet responsibility through tcp ip you are pretty good with that right through transmission control protocol and internet protocol you are going to send this message to the end host and host is going to have this key one again because they have this key they are going to unlock this pretty easy and then they are going to read this it means that algorithm and key is important and in case of this particular type of encryption we are using same key at both places if we have the same key at the source and destination there is no not going to be problem and we can we can achieve confidentiality through encryption the algorithm can be your aes key is your to, to, to is, it is going to be with you and the destination itself how we are going to exchange it that is that is different uh, totally different thing but believe me we are going to discuss about it now you are going to say what is the meaning of symmetric encryption the meaning of symmetric key encryption is whatever key you are using to encrypt a message you are going to use the same key to decrypt the message it means that if at the both ends the the sender and the receiver if you are using the same key it is going to be a form of encryption which is called as symmetric key encryption it is as simple as that but now you can ask me that is it possible to you use different keys also because if you are saying that if you are using same key it is symmetric what is the meaning of asymmetric then the meaning of asymmetric is yes whatever you have guessed right that it it would be possible it can be possible to use two different keys here and here so that we can encrypt and decrypt the message and that is going to be another important thing and that is what we are going to cover in tomorrow's session tomorrow's session we are going to talk about asymmetric key encryption to begin with right having said that now i am open for your questions guys right i have just stopped sharing i am just letting you all know that now you can just wait a minute now i have allowed you everybody that you can ask the question but if it is going to be you can unmute yourself you can ask the question but believe me it is going to be good if you raise your hand and then ask the questions yes please yes abhishek go ahead so so oh, vishnu thanks a lot for taking time to you know deliver this session just one question mm -hmm. are we going to have uh, you know uh, 
some hands on with this firewall ice or like whatever uh, umbrella we are talking about is there yeah we are planning to, to yeah we are, we are planning to have some hands on session on these products you are right abhishek okay okay thanks yeah anand anand sikarwar ji please ask your question hi vishen yes thank you very much so uh, the question is uh, so we are talking about sharing the key and the message right mm -hmm. uh, we i hope uh, for the time being we are currently using the single media that is internet yeah so i believe uh, when we are sharing the keys there must be a some uh, something like tunnels that will, that might come into use like ipsec tunnels is that so or are we going believe to me, some believe me we are going step by step do not worry about it. i'll let you know how exactly this key is going to be exchanged over any unsecured medium but you are right we are exchanging keys in ipsec using internet key exchange protocol which we all know right but if we don't we are going to discuss it but yes we are going to cover on anybody else oh. Yeah, Vishnu. Um, Are we going to discuss ice in uh, like a bit depth or how is it, Vishnu? Not uh, see in 16 session. If I if I take ice, believe me, it's a wonderful product. I can spend 16 hours any time on ice, right? But if you consider, we are just doing a, a, a network security from scratch. We are not going deeper into any product. But yes, once. we are done with the ice you are going to have a pretty decent knowledge about it that where you want to fit it in enterprise network okay, okay. yeah hi vishnu uh, th thanks for this wonderful session and uh, so, i have only one doubt uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we are going to discuss about cisco asa right cisco aci yes asa asa, ASA yes 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 we are going to discuss about Yes. So in that one, we can get to know about the firepower also, right? Because yes. Like basically, right it. now, basically, uh, if I say the Cisco firewall, we are talking about FTD only. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. I know. So we are going to learn about the difference between yes and a firepower. And yes, you are going to. Also, yeah, right? Yes. 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 Sure. Yes. Sure. After this, uh, after this wonderful session, after the uh, we are knowing about the uh, basics. can you take uh, one class about advanced also because it will be so helpful to know about the firewall definitely we are, we are going step by step it is our goal means ashish ashish and i was planning a lot that how to create awareness amongst our fellow engineer regarding network security but believe me the important thing is going to be fundamentals first and it is it is it is with every every everywhere else also for example if you talk about routing and switching we talk about yeah. networking fundamental first and then go deeper into bgp usp or whatever right same thing here let's have a solid background let's have a solid understanding rock solid understanding and then we are going to build maybe in future you are going to see the similar series from me or ashish like asa or for ftd from scratch ice from scratch umbrella from scratch their integration from scratch everything you are going to see so Wow, that's so nice. Uh, so we are uh, we are going with SCT and the security right now, basics like that. Um, yes, right? yes, you are right. So it will be SCT and P also in upcoming future. You can say. Yeah. Okay. So nice. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for that. Yeah, Sandeep Kumar, yeah. Uh, Sheroin, uh, please do ask your question. You can unmute yourself, guys, and ask your questions. Yeah, Vishnu. No, I already asked about like going in depth about. Oh, you thing. already, already. Anybody else, or are we good for today's session? Uh, Vishnu, I uh -huh. have one question. Please, your name first. Ah, uh, my name is Deepak. Yes, please, Deepak. Go ahead. So, um, actually, this question has been partially answered regarding the key and algorithm that needs that is going to be shared. So, I just wanted to know if this. Algorithm is going to be shared during, and the key is going to be shared along with the message, or this is going to be shared beforehand uh, with between the two parties. Pretty so that... interesting, and 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 it, it it's giving me immense pleasure that you are thinking around this uh, 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 along this line. Just give me just two or three sessions time. All of your okay. questions will be answered. Believe me, I have just covered few things, and there are so many things which are coming. okay but the key is going to be you need to attend these sessions and one thing uh, one one suggestions guys right do not uh, be always on 
dependent on these recordings. There is so much content already available on YouTube, internet, Cisco Digital Library. Nobody going to see that, right? Just make a habit of, uh, means, just make a habit of attending this live session. And the reason is, uh, if you are dependent on recording, you are not going to watch it for sure, because there is already available content in the world. Okay, just a suggestion. But it's all up to you. If you are busy, then of course you 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 can see the recordings. I will be placing um, the recording every day, means around 10 or 11 p.m. You are going to get it. Okay. Great. Um, one last thing I wanted to confirm: Where could I find your TCP IP sessions? Because I am new joining to Cisco, and um, I just wanted to take a look into that as well. Yeah. So I will be posting the my channel name. My channel name is Bridge Y, because we bridge Y. Right in people mind. So if you go and write YouTube on YouTube Bridge by Vishnu, you will be finding my channel, and you can see the TCP videos there. In fact, there are so many cool stuffs there, which you want to go. Means cloud networking from scratch, SD WAN from so many things are there. Even the networking basics are also means if if, if you want to uh, give 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 this channel to anybody else who are new to networking also. Sure. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, Vishnu. Uh, um, hi, uh, thanks for the wonderful session today. Uh, it's an off off topic, but uh, yeah, I would like to have some clarity because you guys are into the domain. Perfect. How will, uh, are we doing uh, good in security against our competitors like a Blue Code, Checkpoint, or Palo Alto? Ashish, would you like to uh, take that? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Vishnu. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the question. I think. Uh, you know what, uh, if you talk about inspection in firewall, right? So if you see uh, engines are getting developed day by day, right? We, today, the difference I'll tell you, some of the products which are available in the market, uh, when you talk about the throughput, does not decline when the inspection happens, right? But in FTD, if you talk about specific throughput, if, you talk, if you're talking about 5 GBPS, right? So if we enable the inspection, the throughput may decline, maybe 3 GBPS, something like that. So today our BU is definitely working on that and you will see the better product. And when we talk about the you know, competition in the market, definitely when we talk about integration security solution, so we are the number one, there is no doubt in that. But in terms of uh, uh, specific product, we are you know improving day by day. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Ajit. Thank you so much. Yeah, guys, go ahead, please. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, Vishnu, this is Shwadi. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't have a networking background. So mm -hmm. what you will suggest me like uh, for attending the other sessions, do I need to cover up anything? Uh, I, at anything least you should have knowledge of uh, how TCP IP work, right? The complete okay. flow. Because mm -hmm. see, when we talk about security, we talk about uh, uh, some part of TCP also. Otherwise, you won't be able to understand those attacks and all. But believe me, if you if you want to learn Network security, so network security, at least you should have understanding of network, right? And there is a pretty decent source available. Again, I'm saying Bridgewire, just go there, right, on the YouTube channel, and you will find there are some basic things also that how to compute a stock, how DNS work, how, uh, why do we need MAC address, why do we need IP address, subnetting, and then this complete thing that we are, Still, the OSI model was the best model, right? But still, we are using or we are seeing TCP IP everywhere. So I have explained all these things, right? One video, one or one and a half hour, it is going to take your time. But believe me, your fundamentals are going to be clear. Whatever the approach, I have chosen the same thing. Just this board, pen, uh, and I am explaining all those things to you, right? Just go to the Bridgewire uh, channel and, and, and have a look at some of the content there. Sure, Okay. Yeah, hi Vishnu. Uh, hello. Name please. Yeah, uh, hi Vishnu. This is Murli. Yeah, Murli. Um, yeah, so uh, this, I mean, we uh, you talked about the symmetric uh, uh, key, right? So, uh, so shared secret key advertisement, right? So, would also happen securely? I mean, uh, yes. Is it Just hold your horses, guys. Place? Hold your horses. Yeah. By the end of the fourth or fifth session, right? You will be amazed to see that how things are happening because. I cannot explain this in next five minutes. So that is why I need a complete session. It is coming. Do not worry. Okay. 
Okay. Hi, Vishnu. This is Prachi. Hi, Prachi. Yeah, I'm new to Cisco. I just wanted to know if this training will help in getting any security certification, any basic, uh, you know, security certification from Cisco. As I said, that if security certification is hundred kilometers, you are ready till twenty kilometers in that. But remaining thing you need to cover. But yes, we can tell means me and Ashish can definitely help you, Prachi, that how to go ahead with them, right? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. No problem. So, uh, Vishnu Rahul this side. Hanji Rahul ji. Yes, please. So, first of all, it was a wonderful session. Uh, I've never been into the security, but it was always a dream for me. Nice. Thank the you way so you, much. You know, the way you taught is very good, awesome, I would say. Mm -hmm. Even though I joined via mobile, but the feeling was I'm in front of you and you're explaining so well. Wow. Thank you so much. I am flattered, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, second thing is, are we going to have lab uh, so that we can practice whatever you are telling to us? Definitely, uh, I can, I can, uh, I can point you towards some of the resources which Ashish has uh, built, right? Uh, but now, uh, for this session, I am not planning any uh, lab which I can provide to you. But yes, definitely there are some resources because one thing, if you are in Cisco, believe me. Right. There are so many things, so many resources available. Just, uh, just means, just like that only, right? You just need to know Correct. where those are. So definitely, we are going to help you. And we are little, uh, we are literally blessed to be in this company because there are so, so much things just like that, right? We can go and just get it in terms of computing, in terms of knowledge, in terms of anything. Okay, so we will be guiding you. No worries. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Just to add on. Uh, just to add on Rahul, so this series is basically to understand the network security concepts, right? And how we should design the network security. Uh, going further, we would be having separate uh, domains training as well as Vishnu mentioned previously, right? Like FTD or RISE training. And that point of time, we might be having complete hands-on lab as well. Wow. Thank you so much, Ashish. This is great. Sure, Ashish. Thank you so much. Anybody else? I think we are good for today's session. So guys, uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, and thank you so much for making this uh, session interactive. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much. See you tomorrow. Uh, hey, yeah, go hey, ahead. I think we have another question. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hey, this is Junaid. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, this wonderful session. Uh, Vishnu, uh, you are absolutely right. We have a lot of resources in our Cisco portals. Uh, can you just please share some sort of resources URL in the group so that it can help us? Definitely, uh, I, I can. Uh, we can. Uh, Miss me and Ashish will definitely give it a th uh, means going to talk about it and we'll post something for you guys. Do not worry. Yeah. Thank okay. you so much. Hi, Vishnu. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, Vishnu, you said that like uh, intrude or intercepts the data, right? Mm -hmm. Like decrypting and those things. So the does the intruder requires root access of the device or um, see that is why I'm saying this intruder is actually the picture is that it, it is just like anybody right any uh, any other guy believe me to be an intruder to be a hacker requires special skills right which is sometimes really really uh, advanced skill they need I'm not saying any people any person can go on internet and catch your data right how they are going to get the root access, how they are actually getting the packets out of those routers uh, on the internet. This is again an interesting thing. But believe me, that requires a lot of skills. So that won't be covered, right? That won't be covered. Okay. But I will make your mind uh, 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 thinking in that direction, right? What would have happened if, if somebody wants to uh, take those data out of internet? Right? You should understand, you would be understanding the meaning of it, right? Or basically how this Bitcoin network or this cryptocurrencies network is built. And that is totally whatever we are reading about confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. So most of the things which are going right now in the market, you would be able to understand if you if you go through all these sessions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Vishnu. Anybody else, guys? I think we are good. So thank you so much once again and see you exactly 2 p.m. tomorrow. Bye for now, guys.